Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Um, So exam four is on Tuesday, right? Next week, um, Tuesday, April 30th. April 30th. Um, those of you who are planning to take semi-cumulative, you can take it on a day before if you want to. Would that help? Monday. OK. Yeah. Um, 10.30 in this classroom. <clears throat> uh, or same day, Tuesday. OK. Um, 10.30 to 11.30. And then semi-cumulative, optional. Optional semi cumulative from eleven thirty to twelve twenty. <clears throat> or you can take the optional semi cumulative on Monday. Monday, April 29th at 10.30 to 11.30, right here. OK. <clears throat> Can't take exam four on that day, but optional semi-cumulative, you can. OK. All right. Let's finish up chapter 15, 16, and start the last topic, antibiotics. Any questions? Studying for a lab, probably. OK. All right. Last time, someone asked me, what do these <coughs> Letters IG, MIGG, and IG uh, E stands for. Fozia just brought me a paper that has these uh, uh, abbreviations listed here, so I'm just going to put them right here for you. This is what these Greek letters stand for immunoglobulin, okay, stands for mu, M is for mu, G is for gamma. A is for alpha, E is for epsilon, and D is for delta. These are these five classes of immunoglobulin that we are going to talk about today. Okay? There are five groups or five classes of <coughs> immunoglobulin. Okay? And these are the letters that they stand for, mu, gamma, alpha, epsilon, and delta. All right? Thanks, Fazia. Appreciate it. <coughs> All right? Let's start with the five classes of immunoglobulins. Okay. The most abundant class, did we start them or no? Did we, we didn't start them. No, we didn't start. Okay. The most abundant of these five classes is immunoglobulin G, which makes up approximately 80 to 80 percent of the total serum antibodies. Okay. You'll find it in blood, intestine. Okay. Uh, it protects us against circulating bacteria. This goes through lytic cycle in the body fluids. Okay. And toxins, and you know most of these antibodies are opsonin, so they enhance phagocytic activity. 
this is the only enzyme that passes through placenta and provides protection to the fetus and the newborn. Okay. Only antibodies to pass through fetus and the newborn. Second class, oh, one more note if you want to, you already know that, but just for uh, to refresh your memory, that this is the uh, only body that appears in secondary immune response. Okay? Point F, if you want to add. IgG is the antibody that appears in the secondary immune response. Okay. Second class, IgG, or I'm second, IgM, or mu, immunoglobulin mu, accounts for about 5 to 10 percent of the total serum antibody found in blood and lymph. It is one of the, not one of, it is the most heaviest molecular weight wise. This is the heaviest antibody. It appears in the first antigenic stimulation, primary immune response. Functions are the same as IgG but it cannot transfer from mother to the fetus through placenta because of its molecular weight. <coughs> IgA, 15% <coughs> of the total serum antibody, you will find it in tears, mucus, saliva, okay? So it provides you localized protection some people, they don't have tears. They cannot make tears. Some people, they have dry mouth all the time, right? So those people, they suffer from eye infections, mouth infections, because they don't have this type of protection, no localized protection. Moms who, <coughs> who um, breastfeed their babies, those babies, they have double protection. One, that they receive through their placenta, okay, IgG, and second, IgA, which is found in colostrum, okay, breast milk. Okay. No IgA in uh, formulas. Next class is IgD. 0.2% of the total serum antibody. <coughs> exact function is still unknown. They are antibody, so they do perform opsonization but no one uh, knows what their exact function is other than opsonization. One day we'll probably find out, but at this time, the exact function other than opsonization is unknown. All, tell me if this statement is true or false. All antibodies are good for you. False, false. Look at this one, IgE. 0.002 percent, percent sign is missing here, 0.002 percent of the total serum antibody. Why so little? Because this is no good for you. This antibody is not good for the host. It is found in the blood, but where? Please underline the location of this antibody. Very important. On the surface of mast cells. And if you remember inflammation, what do mast cells have in them? Histamine, histamine. Mast cells are full of histamine. And they are responsible for hypersensitive response. I think in your notes, it's a, it's a typo. What does it say? Hypertensive. My exams cause hypertension, but not. <laughs> but hypersensitive response, not hypertension. Okay, hypersensitive response, not hypertension. <clears throat> okay, let me show you how. Okay, <clears throat> this is hypersensitive response. All right. <clears throat> First of all, any antigen. Any antigen that causes allergy reaction is, call, is called allergen. 
any antigen that initiate that triggers <coughs> the synthesis pardon me <coughs> any antigen that stimulates or triggers the synthesis of IgE is called allergen allergen okay and in the primary immune response, when a host comes in contact with that allergen for the very first time, what happens? Okay. So here's an antigen, allergen, okay, comes in contact with immunocompetent host. Antigen is phagocytized. Phagocytic cell becomes what? Antigen presenting cell. Right? Antigen is presented on the surface, right here. Now, what type of antigen is this? And T dependent or T independent? T dependent, because this antigen presenting cell goes to the T helper cell. And then it goes to the B cell. Okay? Now, remember this diagram from last time? When I showed you this diagram, this antigen was T independent, no T helper cell, right? But this time they are showing you that this antigen is T independent, it goes to the T helper cell, now it goes to the step in which they split into plasma cell and memory cell. <clears throat> and then plasma cell will make antibodies, what type? IgE. Okay. <clears throat> Now, IgE, as soon as it is made, it attaches itself on the surface of mast cell, right here. No ill effect, no side effects in the primary immune response. Person does not even know that I'm allergic to dust or pollen or bee sting or whatever. Okay. So, let's say this person is working in the backyard and is stung by the bee. No problem, no reaction, ill effects at all. Maybe minor rash at the side of the bite. That's it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> all right. <coughs> How long would it take from here to here? Last time when you saw the antigen elimination curve. How long? From here to here. Approximately how many days? 15, approximately 15 days, approximately 15 days. After 15 days, secondary response may take another month, another year, or maybe longer. After this now, the person has memory cells made, right? Now, this is like the socket has been made in the wall now, okay? These mass cells are floating in the body, okay? Now, all... The, the only thing that is missing is <clears throat> the plug, antigen. The person is back working in the backyard, and here comes the bee, and stings the person the second time. Plug goes in the socket. <clears throat> what happens? Antibody-antigen reaction takes place. Mast cell explodes. <clears throat> Depending on the amount of histamine released, reaction may be mild, runny nose, okay, watery eyes, or the person may go into anaphylactic shock. That's why they keep EpiPen, okay. Histamine is vasodilator, okay. It may go into uh, anaphylactic shock because blood vessels dilate. The person goes into hypotension, so, psh, way down, okay. They have to give themselves, okay, a sh shot of epinephrine, right, vasoconstriction. Or just watery eyes, they have to take antihistamine, okay. That's what, this is what hypersensitivity is, right. Makes sense, all right. That's what 
allergy, hypersensitivity is. <clears throat> All right. Next, different types of T lymphocytes and their function. <clears throat> T helper cells or T inducer cells induce. We just saw the function of T inducer cell, T helper cell. They help <clears throat> T and antigens to make antibodies. T suppressor cell. They regulate the synthesis of antibodies. They control the tire of antibodies. When the antibody tire has reached its max maximum tire maximum level, they shut off antibody synthesis. They regulate the synthesis of antibodies, T8, TS cells. Yep? When you say tighter, Concentration, amount, amount, yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Cytotoxic killer cells, TCTL cell, okay? They are responsible for destroying cancerous tumor cells, okay? Uh, cells that are invaded by intracellular parasites. They are also responsible for graft rejection. People who received organ transplant, heart transplant, kidney transplant, sometimes they are put on um, medication that prevent graft rejection. Sometimes they have to take this medication for the rest of their life. The purpose is to suppress these type of cells. So they will not reject the transplant. Okay? Um, if they're taking the anti then they're also susceptible to cells that are going to prevent cancer? Uh, doesn't work that really. They are more actually more susceptible to viral infections actually. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> because they are they are destroying uh, uh, their own fighter cells, actually. Yeah. Yes. Uh, autoimmune disease? No, not opposite. Yeah. Like heart heart transplant patient, kidney transplant patient, that, that those kind of patients. Skin graft person, yeah. <clears throat> um, many of you are going to be working in hospital, has related areas, and they give you TB test, right? They ask you to come back in 72 hours, right? Mm -hmm. What are they checking for? Reaction. Reaction. Why 72 hours? Because not all allergy reactions are immediate, okay? Sometimes some tests, some reactions are delayed, uh, sense, delayed allergy reaction, and those those cells that are that cause delayed uh, uh, allergic reaction, they are TD, special type of cells that cause uh, allergic reaction. Okay. Most of the time, people that come from Asia and uh, islands, they, yep, they give you. Yeah, and they give you false positive. They always give you false positive. And they ask you to take medication, medication for that. Just x-rays and they give you medication to take it for three to six months. Uh, do you take it? False positive? Good for you. Okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> skin graft, no. no. Skin graft, you don't have to. Organ transplant, you do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Skin graft, you don't want. Yeah. Last overhead is for is for. F okay. Now I'm going to ask anything you um, on the test for you. This is. Simply FYI, I can read it for you. If you want, I can go over this with you. Hypersensitivity, we all have already grown. Oh, no, this one I'm going to ask you. Sorry, 
Last one, I'm not going to ask you. But, but, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> this one I will. This orders. Uh, test, like, uh, this is not the last one actually, right? Yeah, this is the last one. This is the last one. Yes, you do. Okay. Okay, this is the second last one. Hypersensitivity, uh, we are, have already gone over that. Good try, Jeff. Diseases, when the body turns against yourself. Graves disease, your body starts to make antibodies against your and excessive release. President Bush, Barbara Bush, and their dog Millie, they all have this disease. Dog too. Remember the little Millie? Yep, all of them. No, getting seriously. Yeah. Eats me. <laughs> Going into deep. <laughs> Rheumatoid arthritis, okay. What type of uh, antibodies are made? Remember, it's autoimmune. So what type of antibodies are made here? What type of cells nourish your cartilage? Okay. Chondrocytes, right, are the s cells that nourish your cartilage. So an antichondrocytic antibodies. Antichondrocytic. Antichondrocytic antibodies. Cartilage is destroyed. Okay. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Pardon me? Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why the heart? Because, okay, mm, remember, I think I may have mentioned it, that my master's thesis was on this. People who suffer from strep throat, there's an antigen on the cell wall of streptococcus pyogenes, which is similar to the antigen that is found on the joints and the muscles of the heart. So when your body fights strep throat, the same antibody binds to the muscles of the heart and the joints. Yeah. <clears throat> Rheumatoid lupus, systemic lupus erythematosis. You said that the muscle in the heart has the same antigen that is found on the cell wall as streptococcus pyogenes. The muscle has a part of some of the characteristics of what you Streptococcus pyogenes cell wall. Joints, joints, all joints of the human. I have proof. Is that in all muscles or just cardiac? All muscles. All, I'm sorry, all joints and the heart muscle. Yeah, heart muscle, not all muscles. Heart muscle and the joints. Cardiac muscle. Rheumatic fever and arthritis. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> Lupus erythematosus, what antibodies are made? Hmm? Every organ, why? Anti nuclear antibodies, anti RNA and DNA. Bad. Okay. Anti nuclear are anti. Nuclear antibodies. And one of the characteristic sign of that is butterfly rash in the face. Okay. Because they accumulate. Okay. <clears throat> uh, B cell deficiencies, Bruton's agammaglobulinemia. Say that, please. <laughs> Yeah, it's bad disease. Bruton is the name of the doctor who first discovered it. A means no gamma globulin. Person cannot make any antibodies at all. You know it. Not balloon. Bubble. Bubble. 
bubble boy. <laughs> bubble boy. <laughs> You're sending him to sky. <laughs> yeah, bubble boy, David. Bubble boy. Yeah. But do you know one amazing thing? Scientists, they have a therapy for that, gene therapy. Twins um, in Germany, they were discovered when they were in the fetus of mommy, they were discovered with the same disease. And Germany, in Germany, scientists, they, were, they, were, they treated those boys uh, prenatally with gene therapy. And they, they're fine. Yeah, okay. Gene therapy. Yeah. <clears throat> So Bruton's agamma globulinemia is a condition where <clears throat> the person has, the baby has no, what? Galt. How do they find that out? Through genetic testing. No galt. No gut-associated lymphoid tissues. So they cannot make any antibodies at all. <clears throat> they have thymus. Their cellular immunity is OK, but they cannot make any antibodies. T cell deficiencies, AIDS, and what's the target in AIDS? T4 cells. Okay. Neslov syndrome is the opposite of Bruton's agammaglobulinemia. The person has GALT, but no thymus. Babies are born without thymus. How long can they live? Maybe a week, less than a week? No thymus, no T cells. How can you live? Okay. You can. Viral disease, how are you protected from viral disease? You can't. So no thymus. Neslov syndrome, again, the name of the doctor who discovered this, Neslov, Dr. Neslov. Neslov syndrome. <clears throat> okay. Now this is I, this one right here. Practical aspects of immunity. Okay. Vaccines, immunotherapy, diagnostic, okay. Not going to ask anything, okay. So you can, don't cross it out, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. ELISA is a test that is most commonly used for what? AIDS to detect. So these are all immuno antibody antigen testing that is commonly used uh, to diagnose diseases. Fluorescent, we already talked about in chapter three. Fluorescent microscopy to diagnose infectious diseases. Agglutination test is what? Okay. Agglutination test is a test in which particulate antibody and, and particulate antigen is used, right? Solid antigen and antibody. Okay. Precipitation reaction is a reaction in which soluble antigen is used with its antibody. Okay. These are all antibody antigen reactions. <clears throat> Uh, vaccine, you already know vaccine, right? What is vaccine? Antigen to protect uh, a person from an infectious disease. Immunotherapy, instead of using an antibiotic, you use, new trend is monoclonal antibodies are being used to treat diseases. Instead of using antibiotic, not antibiotic, antibodies are being used to treat different types of cancers. Okay, so this is FYI, all right. Now we start the last topic of this class, which is antibiotics. Yes, <laughs> anyone knows how much antibiotics are, used, are made in the United States every year? A lot, a lot. I have actually, I have a number. And this number is a few years old. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, where's my number? La, 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 la. Uh, this number. Um, okay. It says 18 to 19 million pounds, so I'm going to make it 30 million pounds now. Okay. 30 million pounds of antibiotics are made in the United States alone. Here, excellent, excellent. Do you know how much? I know, I know, I just, I know it's less than 25% of the overall. 80%, 80 to 85% of these antibiotics are added to animal feed. 
Go Google it. I just did that last night, actually. Last night. 80 to 85% of this 30 million pounds is not used to treat humans. Oh, no, no, no. It is added to animal feed. Pigs, cattle, chicken, along with fe human feces. Really, amazing. Uh, actually, to make them bigger, because animals are human, I'm like humans, they are heterotrophs. So if the bacteria are there, OK, bacteria are heterotrophs. Bacteria will not take up their food, so they will grow bigger. Crazy, crazy thought. Yeah, so. Um, and th this is abuse of antibiotics, really. You, I mean, you can control antibiotics in the civilized countries, but if you go to Pakistan, India, or other countries, you can go. There are Friday bazaars and uh, Saturday, Sunday bazaars, and there are piles of antibiotics. The person cannot read what's written, but he knows if it is blue, you can buy it for diarrhea. If it is pink, you can buy it for fever. Really? Yeah. And they can, they can go on donkeys and horses, and they can get them from China. Really? Not making it up. I've seen it. Yeah. So in Pakistan, yeah. So how do you control antibiotic abuse? Mm -mm. Yeah, but, but they don't feed to the animals. They don't feed to the, they feed to the <laughs> humans. They yeah. Yeah, animal. You can go walk up to any pharmacy and buy any antibiotic in any quantity you want. Yeah. So how do you control? You can't. You can't, really. Yeah. They don't feed them. They're too animal. They respect their animals. Really. <laughs> no, no, uh -uh, no. They start giving antibiotic to the, when they are babies and all that. Anyways, sure. Um, OK, my next question, which is on your test. <clears throat> Does antibiotic cause drug resistance? Does it, do antibiotics cause resistance in bacteria? Do antibiotics cause resistance, drug resistance? You'll be surprised. No. Antibiotics do not cause drug resistance. Okay. Um, I, yeah. I, okay. I'll take. Okay. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Look. Okay. So what do I, if antibiotic doesn't cause resistance? What does it do? How does it leads to resistance? Okay. Okay. I have to. This cow that I'm going to draw won me twenty-five thousand dollars. Did it, did I draw my cow before? No. no? Okay. You have never seen my famous cow. This won me my first $25,000 as endowed teaching chair. Seriously. My topic was drug resistance when I presented. Happy. <laughs> Not happy. <laughs> OK. How can I make it cow? OK, Salmonella. Have you seen that program, Cat Dog? Yeah. Uh -huh. No, this is a cow. You're actually taking pictures. Yeah. All right. 
here's a cow, and here is salmonella in the intestine of the cow. Okay? Hmm? Just the intestine? No, it's a whole cow. Okay. So here is salmonella in the intestine of the cow. Okay? And this farmer has been feeding tetracycline to this cow. And that happens all over the United States. Minute quantities of antibiotic to this cow. Now, whenever this salmonella reaches a population of 1 million to 1 billion, okay, without even tetracycline, okay, whenever this salmonella reaches a population of 1 million to 1 billion, one salmonella is going to be different from the rest. That's called spontaneous mutation, even without tetracycline. So what tetracycline is going to do is kill off these normal tetracycline. But this teenage mutant ninja salmonella, which is spontaneously different, tetracycline has nothing to do with it, okay, is going to kill off normal bacteria, salmonella, there's no competition, okay, for this mutant bacteria now. So, did tetracycline cause this mutation? No. Nope. What did tetracycline do? Make the environment for this teenage mutant ninja salmonella to flourish. Exactly. So when you wash your hands with antibacterial soap, what are you doing? Exactly. Yeah. So this is what happens now. The cow's days are over, or let's not kill the poor cow. Okay, let's keep it healthy. Okay. <laughs> okay. So milk is collected from the, this is actually what happened in Chicago a few years ago. <clears throat> the milk was collected. The milk went to pasteurization plant. Salmonella was in the milk. Unfortunately, pasteurization process did not work. Is it just a place that it didn't work? It's just, yeah, yeah, just bad luck. I drank milk. Okay. I got sick. I went to the doctor. Doctor knows that tetracycline kills salmonella. So he gave me, I went to the doctor. Doctor said, take tetracycline for 10 days. Doctor had no clue that the farmer has been giving tetracycline, that this is a teenage mutant ninja salmonella. So I took tetracycline for 10 days. I didn't get better. 10 days. I'm dead. Yes? Yeah. That's exactly what happened in Jack in the Box and other places. New strains, by the time doctors find out it is new strain, people die. Doctors should have done my stool test and found out right away when I went to the doctor that this is a new strain. The medication doesn't work. Doctors, they don't do stool test or blood test to find out. They just prescribe from their knowledge. Okay, they play God, and people die. So is it better to give combination to different Culture, 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 culture. There you go, there you go, there you go. Maybe one in a million. Abuse, abuse. If they do culture, we will not have resistance. We are impatient too. I want to get better, give me medication. That's abuse. Yeah, exactly. There you go. In the meantime, they'll find out. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And do culture. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially in case of little babies. Okay. It's, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Uh, yep. Uh, one Go ahead, Tracy. Um, about five years ago, mm -hmm. I went to the Keys and um, you know, on vacation, and I came back, and for like a week, I had kind of diarrhea and wouldn't go away. And I was dehydrated, so I either went to the emergency room, so I was just like kind of trying to figure out what was wrong. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, um, they prescribed an antibiotic to me, did a culture, a stool culture, called me like the, um, like four days later and said, yes, yeah, salmonella. Absolutely. Yep. That's exactly how it should be done. Yep. Twenty-four hours. Twenty-four hours. Actually, it's now everything is computerized. It could take maybe less than ten hours. Actually, nowadays. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And see. You could, absolutely, yeah. If the doctor is not arrogant, culture. If they are arrogant, they may take offense to that, but, yeah, sure, sure yeah. Otherwise, yeah, it should not be a big deal, really. So what would have happened if the farmer hadn't given the tetracycline to the cow? What would have happened to that? The normal, normal. You see, the, the, we always have this salmonella, and the mutation takes place, but you see, Normal salmonella will not let the mutant flourish, right. and it will be in check. Yeah, it, not killed, but it not flourish. It not flourish. It will be in check. The number will remain in check. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Not a good idea. I I I I mean against using antibacterial all the time. Not a good idea. Really, not. Yeah. Already. Allergy is different from antibacterial things. It's a different thing. Yeah. Like this, for example, Monte is not good. Bad idea. Let them eat dirt a little bit and all that. Let them crawl, really, seriously. Expose them to a little bit of, yeah, absolutely. Let them build immunity. Yeah. Pardon me? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. So, so it's wrong if we say, well, we shouldn't give antibiotics very often because of the person can develop resistance? You should not use antibiotic um, as long as it's possible. Absolutely. Don't at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you have, like, the strep, I mean... You know. Do a culture if you need strep. If you see beta hemolysis, absolutely use strep. I mean, antibiotic. Absolutely. Sure. But if it is sore throat, no, do gargle. Yeah, okay, that's it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Megan? What if the cow didn't eat the tetracycline and there was like a mutant one that the human got from the salmonella? And then you gave them tetracycline and it would kill all of them except the mutant one, and then what is the same thing that happened in the cow? Can happen in the human? Yes. Good. Yeah? And then, what? Then they just die? Yes. Anyone will die? Sure. You would show signs of getting better because you killed off the overall infection, but there's still that new one that would then, would it re, would you get better than it would re flourish and get sick again? Human? Say, repeat your question one more time. Yeah. The one you can Mutant, change. yeah. And so you take tetracycline, you kill off all the regular. So it's like if you were and sick, the and flush. then you would get better because the bulk of the salmonella would have been destroyed. Right. If you have that one, then it would start propagating and you get sick again. So like, would you get better? It depends. Better? It depends. If, if your immunity kicks in, okay, how many salmonella, bad salmonella you have, okay. If you are taking antibiotic or not, it's okay. It depends, okay, okay if, does your community kick in, okay, how many bad salmonella you have, what good dose did you, do, no, I'm not sure if I follow your question. Well, I guess you're saying if someone, you know, was sick, was showing, you know, actual symptoms of salmonella being sick, right. and you okay. gave them tetracycline, mm -hmm. they were killing off the regular strain of salmonella, mm -hmm. you would mm -hmm. start showing signs, you would start getting better, your symptoms would decrease, right. but you okay. still have the mutant strain, 
Right. Kill off all the regular salmonella. You I guess the they would know that. that it was, yeah, right. Would it? Would that then start repopulating? Sure. So you would get better if you get off your antibiotics or whatever, and then you would just also get sick again. And possible, possible, but. There was yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. But your normal flora will keep it in check. Yeah, we all have that. But your normal flora, as long as you do not kill off your normal flora, your salmonella, bad salmonella, will be in check. Yeah. It will. Yeah. If you keep on taking antibiotic over and over again, it will kill off your normal flora. Yes. Salmonella type of murium, yeah. Mm -hmm. So even with the treatment, still the person could produce salmonella and be a carrier for a very long time? Very long time, sure. There are 1,300 different strains of salmonella. 1,300 different strains of salmonella. Okay. And remember, I, mean, I don't know, they mutate so fast, okay, and there may be many more now. Okay. The number that I'm giving you is, I think, five years old. Yep. yep. If the pasteurization process had worked here, would it have killed the salmonella? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Let's move on. We have to finish it. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> it's an interesting debate. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. So, the history of chemotherapy. When I say chemotherapy, remember, chemotherapy is what? Treatment of a disorder with a chemical. Chemotherapy does not necessarily mean we are treating cancer, right? Chemotherapy does not necessarily mean treatment of cancer. Chemotherapy, treatment of a disorder with a chemical, okay? And chemotherapy history goes way, way back, okay? Century years old, but the modern chemotherapy started with uh, discovery of a magic bullet. Why do we call it magic bullet? Okay, with salvarsin. Why magic bullet? Selectively kills bacteria. Selectively. Without causing much harm to the host. Selective. I had once um, a firefighter. Okay, he was, I think, about 3'5". Very, very, very energetic student. He said, Professor Khan, I know why it's called magic bullet. I said, well, go ahead, go ahead, tell me, please. Because it looks like suppository. No, not, not that's why. <laughs> no, that's not what it's called, magic bullet. <laughs> no. <laughs> you okay? All right. All right. <laughs> and why is it called 606? 606. In science, you have to be persistent when you do research. Dix was uh, <clears throat> chemical number 606. 605 attempts for failure. This was chemical number 606. That's why it's called 606. Now, if you are on Jeopardy and the answer is Alexander Fleming, what's the question? Who discovered penicillin, right? But in my opinion, I will give you the money <laughs> because penicillin was actually discovered by this 21 year old. Uh, gentleman from France, Ernest Dutchens. But in scientific community, it cut throat business. If you have discovered something, you must If you don't publish, no one gives you credit. This young guy isolated penicillin, but no publication. His notes were discovered later that he did the work. He's the one who isolated it. No publication. No one gets it. Mr. Smarty Pants, Alexander Fleming, later published the work. Gets the credit. Everyone remembers him. Same thing with HIV virus, actually. For the past, I think, 10 years, there was a debate between Americans and French. Who gets the credit for isolating HIV first, French or Americans? And last year, the Nobel Prize went to Ta-da! French. Why? Yeah. Education first. So, unfortunately, yeah. Alrighty. <coughs> Oops.
expect from puff antibiotic? I'm going to go a little fast. Okay. From this overhead, you need to remember two terminologies only. Spectrum of antibiotic. Antibiotics that work against either gram positive or negative, they are called narrow spectrum or limited spectrum. Okay. Antibiotics that work against either gram positive or negative, they are called narrow spectrum or limited spectrum. For example, penicillin or bacitracin. They both work against gram positive because their target is peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan. Did I say broad spectrum? Did I say that? Bad teacher, let me go back. Okay. Let's start over. Okay. Narrow, pardon me, narrow spectrum antibiotics are those antibiotics that work against either gram positive or gram negative. Okay? And penicillin and bacitracin are antibiotics that work only against gram positive. Did I say it correctly this time? I think I did. I think I did. Okay. <laughs> Not either or. Oh, no, 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 okay, okay. Uh, the spec narrow spectrum antibiotics are those that work against either or, but the example that I'm giving you work against only on gram positive. Got it? Okay, very good. Both penicillin and bacitracin, they both work against gram positive because both of them they have, their target is peptidoglycan. I thought that's what I said the first time. No? Okay. All right. Broad spectrum antibiotics that work against both gram positive and negative. The definition that I have here is political, politically correct, wide variety of gram positive and negative. Okay. Tetracycline, trimethoprim. One clarification here though, and that is, yes, gram positive, gram negative, mycoplasma is fine, but mycobacteria, Okay, sometimes students get impression that, oh, mycobacteria treated with tetracycline. No, 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 no. Tetracycline is one of the four medications that is used to treat TB. Mycobacteria cannot be killed with um, tetracycline alone. You need rifamycin, INH, ethambutol, and tetracycline. Don't worry about them. No, I'm not going to ask you those four. Just make a little note that mycobacteria cannot be killed with tetracycline alone. That's it. So, because it says that tetracycline kills mycobacteria. True, but not by itself alone. Okay? Trimethoprim. Gram-positive gram negative. Both. Remember this one from lab? Alrighty, trimethoprim. Equally effective against gram positive and negative. Now, we look at the mode of action. There are five different targets. How much time? Plenty. Okay. Alrighty. Five different targets of antibiotics. 21, ooh. Okay. Mm, here we go. Page 561 in your textbook. Mode of action of antimicrobial drugs.
first target, inhibition of cell wall synthesis, penicillins, cephalosporins, bacitracin, vancomycin. Their target is cell wall. Would you consider them narrow spectrum or broad spectrum? Narrow spectrum. Number two, inhibition of protein synthesis, chloramphenicol, erythromycin, tetracycline, streptomycin. Narrow or broad? Broad. broad. Both gram positive and negative, they go through protein synthesis. Injury to plasma membrane, polymyxin B. Narrow or broad? Broad. broad. All living cells, they have plasma membrane. Inhibition of essential metabolites, sulfur trimethoprim. Narrow or broad? Broad. Broad. I'm going to go over these with you one at a time. Just, this is just the overview. Okay. And last one, inhibition of nucleic acid synthesis, replication, transcription. Narrow or broad? Broad. All living cells, they go through replication and transcription. Okay. Now, if you are a physician, if you are a physician, and you are trying to treat a bacterial disease, which of these five routes would you choose to treat a bacterial disease without causing much harm to the host? Ouch. Okay. So what your answer is? Okay. I have cell wall. I have cell wall. Yours is? Protein synthesis. Yes. Five. Okay. Number five. Number five. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Correct answer is number. You should run for an hour. I surrender. Did I say anything? <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, yeah. but how can you say, how can you give penicillin if you don't, if you're not sure it's positive or negative? Did I say anything? <laughs> yeah. so. okay. All right. Yeah. This is number one because humans don't have cell <laughs> So this is your choice number one. And okay, let me ask you this. Which would be your least, the last choice, unless you have no other target? Number three. Unless you have no other choice, that's the one that you should, that should be legit. Number three. Number three. Number three. Number three. All living cells, they use the same four building blocks. You should never touch nucleic acid unless you have no other choice. Nucleic acid, you never should mess up nucleic acid. ATGC, all living cells use the same building blocks. Unless you have no other choice, you should never mess with nucleic acid. Yes, this one and this one. Uh, which one, sorry? Oh, this is number one for TB. Yeah, rifampin, rifamycin, these are for TB. Number one for TB. Yeah. Okay, let's start with number one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. La 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 la. Okay. See if it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, okay. All right. 
inhibition of cell wall synthesis. Those antibiotics that interfere with cell wall synthesis, what do they do? They inhibit transpeptidation enzymes involved in the cross-linking of the polysaccharide chains of the bacterial cell wall peptidoglycan. Got it? Good. Sure, sure, sure. Yes, true. Because of the outer membrane, oh. yeah, the lipid, all the lipid, yeah, that's why. So let me explain this. Okay, yeah, then we'll, yeah. Oh, instead of, yeah, no, I have to draw my own, okay. Remember this? Okay, excellent. Now instead of doing circle, okay, I'll just do circles, that's fine. And what are these circles? peptide chains, and the sugar, peptidoglycan. Okay. So this is peptide chain, and this is glycan, the sugar part, glycan, peptidoglycan, okay? <clears throat> now when the bacteria is making this peptidoglycan, okay, the bacteria needs the enzyme to link the peptide chain to the sugar. It needs an enzyme, right? If you are taking, let's say I have strep throat, okay? I take penicillin, bacitracin, cephalosporin, okay? What will that do? That penicillin or bacitracin will stop the synthesis of enzyme that bacteria needs to glue this protein chain to the sugar. So when the enzyme is not there, many of these chains will be missing right here. So cell wall is there, but it is weak cell wall. It's not strong cell wall. So penicillin, cephalosporin, all these antibiotics, they inhibit enzyme that is involved in transpeptidation, okay? Cross-linking of the polysaccharide in the poly polypeptide. What does it do actually? Okay. Does it kill the bacteria? No. If it doesn't kill the bacteria, so what does it do actually? Okay. Do you have that picture? Oh, yes, you do. Actually, very nice picture. On page 562. Okay. Look at this picture right here. Here's a bacteria. And this bacteria is grown in the presence of Penicillin, look at this. When the bacteria is placed in the presence of hypotonic solution, it actually blows up. Okay. So it doesn't kill, it just makes the bacteria sensitive to hypotonic solution. Actually, I have a better picture, which actually shows you bacteria blowing up. I call it murder in second degree. Really. Look at this one right here, okay? So penicillin doesn't kill the bacteria. bacteria. Penicillin makes the bacteria sensitive to osmotic pressure. 
the cell wall is not strong, it literally blows up. Let me make sure that you understand the concept. Okay? I have strep throat. I take the first pill of penicillin. First, take, first pill of penicillin. What will the penicillin do to the parent cells? The parent cells that are already in my throat. nothing. They have already made the cell wall. When the parents will multiply, their babies will be affected. The parents already have the cell wall. So they will, they, it will not do anything to the cell wall. When their baby is made, the baby will explode. Okay. So how the parents will be killed then? I'm not going to get sick if the parent is not killed. Gobble, gobble, gobble. So combination of antibiotic and phagocytosis. My immunity and antibiotic will take care of me and then I'll feel better. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> so, so let me read this again. <laughs> so these antibiotics, they do what? They inhibit transpeptidation enzymes. What do they do? They are involved in the thinking of sugar and protein in peptidoglycan. Make sense? Okay. Now, this is the question that I just asked you. These drugs are effective in rapidly growing bacteria. Bacteria that already have cell wall, they will not work. Okay. Very good. Very good. The mechanism, I'm going to talk about that in just a few minutes. How do they kill? Or you want to know now? Later? <laughs> yeah, later I will talk about that. Penicillinase. Second target, protein synthesis. Protein synthesis. <clears throat> Here. Uh, OK, yeah. Page 563. 563. Okay. What? Hmm. Why three? Why three? I like five. Why three? Okay. Sorry. One. Give me one second, please. Why three? They charge you more and they take out the material. I don't like it. See? They make it more colorful and they take out the material. Huh? See what I mean? New addition. <laughs> they had more color and they took out the material. Bad. I'm going to go to my old stuff. Fine. Okay. All right. That's just cheating. All right. <clears throat> Inhibition of protein synthesis. Look at this diagram and tell me, please. Here are five antibiotics instead of three. Chloramphenicol. Okay. Tetracycline. Erythromycin. Gentamicin. Streptomycin. I'll make you a copy of these diagrams that I'm showing you. Okay. Which of these five antibiotic is interfering with, with the process of transcription? Five antibiotics, chloramphenicol, tetracycline, erythromycin, gentamicin, streptomycin. Which of these five antibiotics is interfering with the process of transcription? Transcription. Yes. Transcription is done in the nucleus when the mRNA goes into copy DNA, but this is already in the ribosome. Isn't this 
my question is, which of these five antibiotic is interfering with transcription? So your answer should be none. OK. So her answer is, and your answer is, streptomycin. David's answer is, streptomycin. Anybody else? OK, because we don't have a lot of time. She is right. This is translation, not transcription. Okay. All right. So none of these. This is translation, not transcription. Transcription is already done. In transcription, we make RNA. So all, all of these are interfering with translation, not transcription. All right. Sometimes I try to trick you. Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay, all the time. <laughs> Let's just stop here. We will continue next time. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> you can do yes, we are going to finish. Oh, yes, you can. Of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. Same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.